Hungary guidelines, the American Society of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning Engineers. I used to joke all the time, this was a group that I wanted to hang out with and party on a Friday night. Of course, that was sarcasm because as I read through their uh, the ASHRAE guidelines and uh, all the updates and stuff they make, it's to me is dry and some of it's above my level of intelligence. But as irony would have this, I'm now a, a paying member of the ASHRAE Society. And they provide something that is incredibly valuable to data center uh, operators, data center owners, and anyone uh, who works in facilities that has uh, work within a data center. Uh, Mark Monroe, I had him, sorry, I didn't mention him. His picture was um, on one of those first slides where I had the global data center leaders. Mark is um, absolutely a kind and brilliant man. He has been a uh, independent consultant for years. Most recently, he was hired by Microsoft to develop their next generation of efficient data centers. Uh, this fall, past fall of 2018, I was in Seattle with AFCOM Leaders Lab. We did a, a white paper on uh, green data centers, energy efficiency, and Mark was uh, our Leaders Lab leader for that. And having the opportunity to pick his brain and and work with him was incredibly valuable. But he spent a lot of time on ASHRAE, and I want to spend maybe a little more time on this than I did on PUE. But I always very much focused in on the recommended the recommended guidelines from ASHRAE, which tell me uh, where we see the A1, 2, 3, and 4, that's the class of server and equipment. Uh, there's actually a website. I want to say it's everyserver.org, but there is a website that can help you uh, discern what class your equipment is, but let's make this safe assumption. Let's say that everybody has class A1 equipment in their data center. When we look at ASHRAE's recommended range, and what this means is, hey, for the, the best uh, overall reliability of your equipment, your lowest failure rate due to uh, your environmentals, this is the range we recommend. And they say no lower than 59 degrees and no higher than 89.6 degrees. When we measure temperatures within the data center at the rack level, ASHRAE recommends that we have bare minimum, the end of each row, we have temperature sensors at the bottom of the rack, the middle of the rack, and the top of the rack. And additionally, as a minimum, one rack in the middle of that row to completely fill that out. And if you look at that range, it's fairly wide. And as I was in my own data center and go into several others, um, I don't always see temperatures at the 59, but I'll see temperatures in the 66 to no more than 70 range. And as we look at this on a class A1 server, they're saying you can go up to at least 90 degrees on A1 equipment and still have no or still have the least amount of risk of failure to your equipment. But as we expand into class uh, A2, A3, and A4 servers, you can see the huge temperature ranges that they show us here. So again, the recommended range was very small, and then they go to an allowable range that tells us, hey, we realize that the server switch and storage manufacturers, that their equipment is becoming more dense, that they are doing everything in their uh, design capabilities to make servers more efficient and not have such a, a deep need for uh, extra amounts of cooling. So if there's one thing that you would take away from this session today, uh, this, this is one of the slides that will help you the most, is understanding those guidelines, how to live within them without affecting reliability, and staying within them to get the greatest amount of efficiencies in your data center. And this to me, was um, a funny slide. Uh, Mark had this in our Leaders Lab workbook. Um, we're not suggesting that you keep your data center at 95, but what we're suggesting is this, is that you understand the ASHRAE recommended and then the allowable envelope, and that you learn proper techniques to safely increase those temperatures where your equipment and your mechanical equipment and your IT equipment are operating at a very efficient level. And I will show you, I believe here, yes. So David Moss from Dell, he came up with this uh, very simple but incredibly accurate way to find what we call your sweet spot. And that is 
we want to have our set point and the amount of cooling we're provided. We don't want to give the equipment not one drop more than what it needs. Uh, so David Moss came up with this technique. I use this all the time. And in every data center that I've used this, set points between 76 and 82. Uh, over the course of 48 months, I've not had one equipment failure. And the reason is I followed ASHRAE guidelines, <clears throat> I measured PUE, and I used this simple method from David Moss. So the idea is this, you want to have a measurement for your PUE. And I would recommend if you do this, that you're doing it on a very hot middle of the afternoon day when the load is heavy. Why? If you can get it to function uh, and survive properly in the hottest, heaviest moments uh, of your day, then you know you will be good throughout the 24 hour time period. But you'll measure your PV and you would start to raise your set points one degree at a time. Um, I have to be honest with you, I actually, I'm impatient. And I have found that for me that it seems like it takes about two degrees to uh, affect uh, compressor cycle change. Um, but one degree is good. And what happens is you raise that set point one degree, you allow the system to stabilize. I do a lot of this, walk up and down the rows uh, that that crack unit is supplying air to. I try and get a good listen to the CPUs. Are they ramping up? Are they staying the same? Um, I do a lot of measuring of temperatures with um, an IR gun and temperature strips. And I just make sure that that one degree didn't cause any issues or that it's not stressing or causing reliability issues with the equipment. And you continue this process. And uh, I'm sorry, I left out an important point. After every degree, you want to measure your PUE again. You want to see where you're at and is that ratio changing. And you continue through this process until you get, receive a PUE measurement that's higher than where you started. Once you see that, then you can back it, back it down a degree or two, and that's where David Moss says you will find your sweet spot. Why is this important? This uh, next bullet point is what got me so interested in trying to gain efficiencies in Ohio State's data center and helping others to do so. It says every degree you raise your set point, you will lower your air conditioning bill three to 7%. I found that to be not true, it was my opinion. I didn't have any data or any science to back that up. And that specific sentence got me interested in trying to prove that wrong in Ohio State's data center. And as every day, week, month, and year went by, all I did was provide data to prove that to be correct. So if you are measuring your PUE, if you know the amount of kilowatt hours you're using for IT equipment and also for your mechanical equipment, you can start to quantify and see how a three to 7% savings over the course of a week, a month, a year would add up and be very, very significant. So again, this is a great technique. It doesn't require any special uh, skills other than being able to measure your PUE and uh, exercise a good dose of patience.